Hi everyone, my name is Ariana Romero. This is my Act Like a Leader, Think Like a Leader presentation. Start off with um, telling you about a few things about myself. I'm uh, from Surprise, Arizona, business administration major, senior, graduating this December. Um, uh, here's a little bit of my experience. I'm a professional soccer player. I played uh, 2013 where I, and I got drafted by the Houston Dash and recently been traded to the Washington Spirit. I also play for the Mexican national team. Um, it's, I've been playing since I was a f senior in high school, so it's been about six years or so. Um, I recently played in the World Cup this summer, and that was, that was a dream come true. So it's, it's, it's something that I've dreamt about, playing soccer. So now I'm on the new career path of being a coach. I'm currently coaching here at the UNL women's soccer program. I, I used to be an All-American here, and now I am an undergrad assistant coach. So what that means is I've exhausted all of my eligibility, meaning I can't participate in, in any competition here. So what that means is I'm, as a student coach, I am used to step into practices and demonstrate some drills that the head coaches see fit that I that I can provide more help, sort of say. It's very it's very difficult to explain, but um, essentially I lead by example. I step into practices, give some feedback, help players out, and not just on the you know physical competitive play, but on the tactic and technique kind of side that as a player I didn't really recognize. So um, being a coach has definitely been a, a switching of uh, mentality. It's not ab about being, you know, aggressive on the field, but now it's a matter of being disciplined and aware and understanding um, the position change. So I essentially also remind the team to remember their goals, um, to improve every day and not just to get through sessions. One of the things the book talked about was the outside perspective. Um, a lot of the times, as a coach, you you have to think before you you act. So I found this very challenging because it was very difficult in the sense of not thinking before you say anything or have players do certain things, but. It, it all made sense after reading the book because me personally being being a coach now has been a complete 360 because I cannot prove my way of um, playing through outside necessarily acting out I want to play but I can't provide that in, in competition so now it's a matter of doing it in training and repetitions and helping other players out so one of the one of the hardest one of the hardest uh, challenging things to get out of this is to acting out because I can't necessarily act out in competitions. So what I've done is just um, do individual sessions and do um, some game live game scenarios to try and implement this outside perspective. Three key ideas that I got out of it was mainly. The, the idea of I won't attend unless I'm speaking up and introducing myself and what I do. What that means is I never really embrace the whole coaching thing yet just because it's new to me. I'm more used to playing. Um, so by that is I need to reach out more and help um, you know players here develop. And I know my head coach is here because they, they was one that coached me my four years playing. So I just need to develop more of a network outside of my comfort zone. Um, also, one of the things I find difficult is me being a, lead, a leader outside of my norm, which is playing. I thought that was kind of weird. It felt off, so fake. That's what the book said. So it's, I felt that it was a tendency of just not acting of who I usually am. So I just avoided coaching in general. So I just stuck to stepping into some sessions and um, allowing my soccer speak for itself. But at this point, I can't allow that. So that leads me to the next point where I had to experiment more with uh, acting first and not thinking as a coach. 
So what that means is I had to adapt to my new environment being a coach. So I would now um, do more communication between players, also with the head coaches, asking for some feedback and trying to really figure out what my new style is as far as uh, approaching um, soccer in a new aspect, which leads to the whole networking. Now being a part of a new career path, it's it's crucial for me to develop myself as far as what I see myself as. Um, you know, the whole operational is more internal, so day by day kind of a thing. And I'm not familiar with the whole head coaching, but as an undergrad, um, I just do the bare minimum as far as stepping in, step out, coach, feedback, little things. But what when I want to get to is the whole personal and strategic. Uh, networking where I want to also grow as a soccer player I've, I've in the process of also doing that but I want to put more of a priority on developing as a um, as a coach um, so that is me talking to these head my head coaches here branching out doing some classes getting a coaching license that's something that I can do to grow personally and professionally um, and wherever that takes me I can strategically start networking and um, take up some new ideas that I can gather from practices and training and games, um, some notes and start to branch out more, not just in my internal networking process, but also external. I can reach out to other schools and other programs and, you know, start off to uh, communicate and let them know of my new position and maybe after college start to develop um, more of an awareness of um, the whole coaching aspect. So with that said, it's I'm still in the middle of transforming my new ad identity because I have yet to see myself as a coach, but I'm in, I'm in the midst of figuring that out. Um, one thing that the book mentioned was chameleons, which, is, which are people who are comfortable shifting shapes and styles to fit new situations, which is what I need to be. Um, they typically advance rapidly, experiment with radically new and different way of behaving. So I'm in the midst of, of doing this, coaching, <laughs> not playing. So um, an example of this is just uh, implementing what I'm learning from my head coaches and uh, stepping aside from playing and try to help guide players through the process of what I think verbally and not through uh, acting necessarily. But in this aspect, it counts for acting just because like it's my job as, as a coach. Um, true selfers tend to feel inauthentic when asked to stretch outside their comfort zone. I tend to believe that I'm still in this just because it's, it's I'm not familiar with the whole um, authoritative approach. Um, I like to lead by example, so by that I mean by showing um, younger players sort of say uh, what, what the right thing to do is in certain situations that perhaps um, come up. And I don't, one of the biggest things for me is that I don't want to seem that I'm a coach because I'm seeking power. I just simply want to help develop uh, players and show that um, I'm capable of this um, new career, which leads me to who my role model is. Um, Peter J. Underwood, he used to, he uh, is assistant coach here at UNL. Some of his background, he had a bachelor's in sports psychology um, and a master's in athletic administration. He's not, he's no longer with us, but um, he's a, he helped us to a um, regular season in Big Ten championship. This was my senior year, so it's definitely a memorable experience. Um, he was a volunteer coach before he was named assistant coach, so he really stood out for me just because he was willing to do respect the process and willing to learn and adapt before he um, was named a coach. So it, essentially I, I saw that as a, an opportunity to develop as a, as a person, as a coach, and I respect that. Um, he was known to, he was very selfless. He made time for those who wanted to prove, improve. So there would be things where he brought so, uh, such as technology. So he would record a court, like a practice, and then he would show us later on and be like, hey, remember that one play that we were talking about? And um, he would just bring things up just so uh, 
to improve. Excuse me. Um, he is no longer with us. He fortunately passed away, which leads me to the whole new approach that I've I've embraced. Originally, um, being a student coach, I just saw it as testing waters and doing something with myself after I graduate. I'm not sure. But after reading this book, my new outlook is um, to really embrace this, to lead with my enthusiasm, bring uh, players together, and really focus on the development. It really help mentor uh, players. So with that said, I need to create more relationships. I, I know that it's very difficult for myself to create new relationships as far as people that I don't know and as far as some um, might not see soccer as important as I do. So with that, with that said, I just need to understand and try and implement key things that Peter had taught us um, and to keep, to keep players from, I'm sorry, <clears throat> to implement key things Peter had taught the program and what he brought to us. Um, change is good, so I just need to embrace failure. I might be a little rusty at first, but I'm definitely trying to uh, approach this as, in a professional manner with all respect and um, good intention. Who's to say that I won't um, I won't uh, develop a new liking for this? So uh, that is my presentation, and I just wanted to show you that I am in the office of the soccer facilities, and um, this was the wall of excellence, and just a key example. Here is my info. Wall of Excellence, Nebraska Cornhusker, really proud of it. And now I want to bring a coaching aspect to my new perspective of soccer. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoyed it.